Hello and welcome to Still Behind the Bench. My name is Adam and on this channel I will attempt to describe the science behind distilling spirits in a more technical way. Hopefully it will whet your appetite to learn more and teach you enough so that you're more self-sufficient. So for this video I'm going to be talking about dissolved oxygen. So let's get started. So first I wanted to thank my Patreons and other supporters, especially Chris, Linton, and David. I can't thank all of you enough for the support you give me and this channel. All right, so yeast need oxygen in order to respirate and replicate. That oxygen needs to be dissolved into the wash, into the water, in order for the yeast to be able to access it. And that's true for a lot of organisms that live in water. Fish, crustaceans, mollusks, other arthropods, plants. If the oxygen's not dissolved in the water, then they don't have access to it. But I'm not going to be talking about why organisms need oxygen. This video is going to be about how much oxygen yeast need, how to figure out how much oxygen is available where you live, and then what kind of outcomes you can expect for various methods of introducing oxygen. All right, so first we're going to be looking at this table here. What this table describes is essentially how much dissolved oxygen you can find in fresh water at sea level at a specific temperature. So, you know, if you just have, if you live at sea level and you have a bucket of water and it's been sitting there all day and the water is, say, at 20 degrees Celsius or 68 degrees Fahrenheit, then there's going to be roughly 9.092 milligrams per liter or ppm of dissolved oxygen in that water. If the water is 30 degrees Celsius or 86 degrees Fahrenheit, then there's going to be 7.558 milligrams per liter or ppm of dissolved oxygen in it. So why is this important? Well, we need to do some math and we need to use these values to help us out to figure out how much air is available to, or sorry, how much oxygen is available to us and determine whether or not we need to add more oxygen or not. The formula is pretty simple. Essentially, it is the part here in red. You're going to be taking the, per, the air pressure at your elevation at a thousand meters in kilopascals, it's 90.179 kilopascals, dividing it by the air pressure at sea level, which is 101.325 kilopascals, times how much dissolved oxygen would be in the water if the water is 30 degrees Celsius at sea level. So you get that value from this chart, right? So 30 degrees Celsius, 7.558 milligrams per liter, 7.558. That means this bucket of water sitting at a thousand meters above sea level, the temperature of the water is 30 degrees Celsius, it's going to have 6.727 milligrams per liter. If we then look at this, the US units, we have a bucket at a thousand feet and at 86 degrees Fahrenheit, the pressure at that elevation, thousand feet, is 14.183 psi. Air pressure at sea level is 14.696 psi. The amount of dissolved oxygen at sea level and 86 degrees Fahrenheit is also 7.558 milligrams per liter. So that means at a thousand feet, which is about 300 meters, you're going to have 7.294 milligrams per liter. So in both these cases, the amount of oxygen is too low because the optimal amount of oxygen for yeast is between 8 and 10 milligrams per liter. So these are both below 8, right? So in both these cases, and that's a pretty warm wash, you're going to want to add oxygen if you live at these elevations and your wash is at these temperatures. Next up, uh, I'm going to show you how we can figure out what your elevation is. So I got this app here, web app, I should say. It's a website. The link is going to be in the description. It's pretty easy to use. You fill in the top three numbers. So in this case, pressure at sea level, I just put in one atmosphere. But you know, if you want to use kilopascals or PSI, you can use these two, these values here. ATM, one atmosphere, it's easy to remember. Then you put in your altitude. In my case, it's 1,159 meters. You can change it to feet. Where I live is 3,802 feet above sea level. And then we got the air temperature right now, 20 degrees Celsius, that gives me a pressure of 88.523. 88.523 kilopascals divided by the sea level pressure times the amount of dissolved oxygen at sea level with a 22 degree wash. So in this case, right, 22 degrees, 8.743. So that means if I have a bucket of water in my condo and it's 22 degrees in that bucket and the air temperature is 20 degrees, then there'll be roughly six or 7.638 milligrams per liter or ppm. If I then suddenly moved to the Dead Sea in Israel and my wash was now 30 degrees, since it's below sea level, the number is going to go up, right? Since there's more air pressure, that means at sea level, it would be 7.558 milligrams per liter. But at the Dead Sea, since it's 430 meters below sea level, which is about 1400 feet, the amount of dissolved oxygen has gone up 
and there's 7.946 milligrams per liter. So yeah, the math is pretty easy. So that means in all these cases, the only one I wouldn't bother putting in any significant extra effort is probably this one. When you're mixing in your things into the water, you're gonna be adding extra oxygen, so the number's gonna go up, but you don't need to do anything special, right? You don't need to intentionally do things to introduce more oxygen. But I did run some tests. So I got my uh, dissolved oxygen meter here from X-Tech, this thing's a pain in the ass to use because it uses what's called a polarographic sensor. Here, I'll show it to you. This little thing here. And it consumes oxygen as it's measuring. So that you can't just stick this in and test the dissolved oxygen. You either have to constantly move this around or you gotta stir the wash because if you just sit it in there, you're just gonna see the numbers slowly drop, right? So the the liquid needs to move, or this needs to move, or sometimes both of them need to move. It can be a pain. It's not so bad in large containers, but the smaller the vessel, like when I originally tested things for this video, I was using small beakers and I couldn't get precise numbers because every time I was testing it, it was using up oxygen in the water in that beaker. So I moved over to the five gallon buckets. And that's where my samples came from. So I left one bucket just sitting there. Um, I tested it multiple times throughout the day and it averaged a temperature of 22 degrees Celsius and 7.7 .7 milligrams per liter. So it's not that far off from this, right? Discrepancies could be in the calibration of the meter or the temperature. That's not too bad. You know, it's pretty close to eight. Mixing in ingredients is probably going to raise this. So if you're doing something simple like sugar wash, simply the, the actions of mixing is probably going to introduce enough oxygen to get you up over that eight. So the tub faucet was actually pretty surprising. 8.8 .8 milligrams per liter. It took me a while to get it to come out at like a constant 21 degrees, but I got it. And so yeah, 8.8 .8 milligrams per liter from the tub faucet. And that's, the tub faucet doesn't have an aerator on it. Then we moved to my kitchen sink. So my kitchen sink is the kind, the faucet on the kitchen sink is the kind that has, you know, the, the attachment on the end and you can pull it out and it has the tube so you can spray with it. And it has an aerator in it. And I was surprised, 9.71 milligrams per liter at 21 degrees Celsius. So almost hitting 10, that's well above what the air should be. So those aerators work amazingly well. I tested it about an hour later and the temperature had dropped. So I did this one at night, temperature had dropped. It had only dropped to 8.55, which is actually kind of surprising. I figured it would have dropped more. In the case of these three, if you're just doing a sugar wash or maybe a rum, you know, so you're putting in molasses and just using something like a kitchen sink that has an aerator on it or you know, your tub faucet, you can get, I'd say good enough oxygen levels just doing that. And then stirring is gonna get you even more. Now we go into the actually stirred one. Again, I hit 8.8 .8 milligrams per liter and I used, I used this uh, carboy stirrer to stir it up on the end of a drill. I only did it for like a minute and a half, maybe. Temperature again was 21 degrees. So that worked just as well as the faucet, the tub faucet. And then I left it and I was gonna test it after an hour, but I left it for two and a half hours because I forgot about it. But when I came back and tested it, it was sitting at 7.1 milligrams per liter. I didn't test the temperature, or I forgot to write down the temperature, I should say. But I imagine it was probably pretty close to 22 degrees Celsius, and it was probably trying to equalize similar to the amount that the atmosphere would normally let it have. It was just sitting there. The one that surprised me the most at first was the aeration. So I have this giant pump, right? So I used it to aerate four gallons in a five gallon bucket, which would be about 15 liters. So the water in it was 20 degrees. After 30 minutes, it was 8.6 milligrams per liter. So I was like, that's great. It's only going to go up from there. I left it for another 30 minutes. And when I measured it again, it had gone down, not up. And it wasn't until I saw the temperature. I'll show you what you get the readings on this. I don't know if you'll be able to see it that well. So you have your DO reading. In this case, it's at milligrams milligrams per liter, and it shows the temperature below it. But once I saw it said 24 degrees Celsius, it made sense. So since I was only using, what is that stone? I was using the one diffusion stone or air stone. And I was using a short tube that was only about this long coming from this giant pump, which I bought for 100 liter washes. The air coming out of this pump after 60 minutes was warm and the pump itself was hot. And that's why the temperature value of the water was so high, even though the air temperature in the room was dropping. That's probably why this value is so low. I wanna get another pump and run it again. I wanna get a smaller aquarium pump because this, this pump here is too much for just a little five gallon bucket. So, you know, it comes with this manifold so you can do up to 
six air stones at a time, which is what I normally run if I'm doing my 100 liter wash. Aeration is as far as I went. I have done pure O2 in the past. I did it as a, a test for a high gravity wash. I was doing 1.15, so I went out to the local hardware store and you can buy those little red containers meant for brazing or little cutting torches. You can buy them as kits sometimes with map gas. I dumped the entire thing into a 100 liter wash because I didn't want to have this cylinder with pure oxygen sitting around in my condo and I hit 26 milligrams per liter and that was at 22 degrees. So that's a crazy number. With the value this high the only thing I really noticed was that it fermented faster. I mean it was just a sugar wash and it was more just I was just curious to see what would happen. But yeah I noticed it really only fermented quicker. So getting back to these values. So yeah, if you're only doing a sugar wash or a rum wash, or if you're using a, a malt extract or fruit, you know, things where you don't need to heat the wash up then using you know your tub faucet or a sink faucet or you can also get i'll show you an aerator for garden hoses right here so the brass craft sf0204x in the description you can just google this or just google sf0204x and you'll find this thing but yeah it's an aerator for garden hoses so you should be able to hit values like these with that i want to get one and test it out but you know it's still winter i mean it snowed here today and so it's still winter here and so outdoor garden faucets are usually still shut off so they don't freeze but yeah i want to get one of these and test it out and see if it's similar to this and then i'll just make like a short video so sugar water washes and washes you don't need to heat up you can let it sit if your values are high enough or use the tub faucet or the sink faucet and then you know if you're going to be mashing or otherwise heating up your wash you'll want to wait for it to cool down and then just before you're about to pitch your yeast you'll either want to stir it or aerate it and then pitch your yeast as soon as possible and then close it up because if it's closed up all the oxygen that's trapped in the water even if it comes out of the water is still going to be trapped in the headspace and as the oxygen is used up in the water that oxygen will redissolve back down into the water so the yeast will still be able to get at it and that's it for this video on dissolved oxygen I hope you learned something. Please click like and subscribe if you want to learn more. Also, make sure to check out the Patreon or the PayPal donation link if you want to support the channel. But no pressure and have a great week.